नमस्कार तौर्य प्रतिष्ठान वर्चुअल फोरम वेलकम्स यू ऑल फॉर टुडे सेशन आई एम रमा मांजरेकर वी विल बिगिन आवर प्रोग्राम विथ शांति पाठ सहनावतु सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर करवाहै तेजस्वीना बधीतमस्तु मिदिषावह ओ शांति 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 नमस्ते एवरीबडी we have dr kausavi sarkar with us today kausavi welcome to taurya pratishthan's virtual forum dr sarkar is a student of guru paushali mukherjee ratikant and sujata mohapatra and is a professor in dance at unc charlotte she runs a professional development opportunity for indian classical dance educators through the continuing education program she received the prestigious national endowment for the arts grant for bringing odissi into mainstream art contexts a doordarshan graded icic iccr empaneled and national scholarship holder dr sarkar has created a substantial body of work in scholarship performance and education she teaches inside and outside academia and maintains dual careers in performance and teaching she received her phd from the ohio state university with inter interdisciplinary research interests in digital humanities cultural studies queer studies arts entrepreneurship dance community and religious studies her monograph dance technology social justice focuses on odissi's journey as a technique for social justice her second book shaping s curves focuses on female choreographers in the field of odissi she will begin today's session with a mangala acharan then go through a presentation about odissi the nuances of the dance form the history of the dance form and such and towards the end she will present two of her own choreographies we are very excited and honor to have kausavi on the virtual forum today kausavi welcome pranam pranam to everybody pranam to my seniors my love to my peers thank you so much for inviting rama i am truly honored um thank you i i do want to just share uh, just a few uh, typo corrections if i may um sure. my the presentation that i will share at the end is not my own choreography it's by choreographer dr rohini dandavate um and hopefully she is able to join um if she is um, perfect perfect that will be awesome okay yeah thank you um and uh, also i'm looking out for my guru guru poshali mukherjee she might also be joining rama so if she that will be exciting thank you yeah and if she does um she is so uh she is not just proficient in odissi dance she's also a percussionist she's a mardala artist so hopefully wow. she'll give us uh, a little more insight into odissi tala so uh, without further ado i want to start my journey and i want to invite all of you pranam i want to invite all of you in a land acknowledgement um we are in the united states of a and here we start with land acknowledgement the indigenous lands however um our indian classical forms always have bhumi pranam always have a prayer always have an acknowledgement of energy uh, in nature and energy in the community so please join me at least in uh, in the gestural capacity um, and if you want you can do it full out karatak gadi ghana tha karatak gadi ghana tha karatak gadi ghana sa sa thi na ka thi ni sa sa thi na thi na thi ta thi ni sa this is the bhumi pranam 
and as you see it energizes the grounds we stand on we dance on so i want to start my presentation today with namami it's a shloka uh, it's an ode to lord ganesha and uh, the mangala charan has a few aspects and i want to share some of those aspects um, such that you can point them as i'm dancing the very first one is pushpanjali pradan so i'll have some rose petals in my hand i'll offer them um metaphorically and uh, realistically as well uh for the lord and then i start my bhumi pranam and then i sort of acknowledge jagannath subhadra and balaram jagannath is the primary deity in odissi and jagannath temple in puri attracts audiences if i may say from all over the world and definitely from all over india um then i'll move on to the shloka i'll describe the magnanimity the beautiful largeness of lord ganesh i show um parvati i show shiva i show uh i show the snake and then i end with a sabha pranam i acknowledge my audience i offer my pranams to my audience and then i uh, do the three khandi pranam where i am offering my obeisances to the lord to my guru and to the musicians and audience with me so namami mangala charan this is choreographed by the iconic legendary guru kelu charan mahapatra and um, Uh, it's a simple ek tali which is a four beat cycle ta e thi na ka thi ni ta e thi na thi na ki ta thi ni ta ri ki ta di dha la ang ta ka ta a ta 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 ka ta 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 ka ta 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 thom ta kar ta ka gadi ghanadi so this is the first bowl that you will see today
Putra 
lovely beautiful call so we thank you thank you so much um, i want to get i want to uh, you know get go we get going with the power fine presentation mm -hmm. although i will be very grateful to to hear or see on the chat any images that stuck to us in this presentation in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself and share. Is there anything that you want to share with me as you see this? I have a whole PowerPoint lined up after that. So if anybody wants to ask her something or comment on it, please go ahead um, after this beautiful Mangala Charan. And I'm so glad that we changed it from Vakratunda to Namami. It was a very unique uh, presentation uh, to the dance form. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is mm -hmm. Anand, Anandji, I, I saw you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the coordination of movement, uh, the rhythm, and the meaning of the bhav that you were trying to portray created a unique and whole aesthetic experience that is probably not possible to give through any other medium and so thank you very much thank you you bring up so many points you bring up the the physical geometry of it you bring up the sort of mental connection with the art form and then you finally also evoke the, the soulful, says Monali, uh, in rasa theory, you might call it sattvic. So the aspect of really connecting energetically with the performance, with the performer, and uh, the ability of transformation in and through performance. And that brings me, brings me to, uh, the title of my talk, which is this understanding of uh, understanding of transformation as something that's ingrained within the form, within the dance, within the philosophy. I acknowledge uh, Pranayaji's text um, chat. Um, thank you for your uh, kind words. And I started learning Odyssey. I can't take credit for it. My mother took me to a dance school. I guess I was 10 years of age. Um, and I never missed a class. That's my credit. <laughs> um, so I'm going to share my screen and we will um, dive into a little bit about the, the various aspects of this beautiful form. So thank you again, Taurya. Thank you, Rama, for acknowledging Odyssey's artistry. And Odyssey is definitely 
uh, known for its curvilinear aesthetics. It's really known for the circularity. I remember my guru, Guru Koshali Mukherjee, in my very first class talking about Odyssey is all about half circles and full circles. You are only going to do those two things, half circles and full circles. Sometimes you'll complete a circle, sometimes you'll start another circle before completing one. So I want us to um, really feel what Anandji also mentioned in terms of the bhava and the rasa, the real soulful connection that Monali also mentioned. And this is um, a professional artist, Arushi Mudgal. She is Guru Madhavi Mudgal student. And uh, she's based in Delhi, but this performance was in New York. It was a Drive East festival. And um, I took this excerpt from um, dance uh, reviewer, Alistair Macaulay's article. And I quote, Macaulay writes, I find Odyssey the most sensuous of the Indian dance forms. It moves different planes of the torso, notably shoulders, waist, pelvis, against each other with subtly gorgeous tension. I also find it the most lyrical. Although I have visited Orissa and other parts of India, I watch as an outsider. Yet Odyssey as seen on in these pictures speaks movingly and on many levels, even to those of us who are strangers to its language. And this also holds true for many of us. Um, at the beginning of this presentation today, Rama, you were speaking in Marathi, and I am a stranger to the language. However, there is the beauty of, of the tonality and, and the modulation, voice modulation that makes uh, especially artists really transparent. <laughs> um, in any case, this idea of subtly gorgeous tension, I think I take the, this, this phrase very seriously from Macaulay's writing here. There is a tension in the body, definitely, and it is extremely measured. And uh, in, in just a second, I will show you the aesthetics and the sort of degrees of dynamism in the body. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. But just keeping this in our minds as we go through its history. So uh, again, we are talking about a history of a really long time, over 2000 years or so. Um, so it's impossible to cover in a single slide. Um, in any case, I'll try my level best. We do need to note that Odyssey as it exists today, the appellation of the name Odyssey, it emerged in the 1950s when a group of activists, cultural activists, scholars, critics, artists, dancers based in Orissa, they came together and sort of consolidated the form in order for its recognition as a classical form. And a, the Indian nation state uh, needs to recognize, federally approve a form classical status. Then the classical artist and the classical program becomes this uh, ambassador of the nation. So it's not just Odyssey from the Eastern Indian state of Orisha, but it's also Odyssey artists representing the entirety of Indian nation state. <laughs> It's important to also note uh, there were only two dances mentioned in the Natya Shastra by Bharata amongst Savanti, Panchali, but those dances are more of geographical and we don't necessarily hear them. We do see Dakhinatya and Odra Magadhi. And I say this with a lot of pride and a lot of admiration for the culture. I am myself not from Orissa, I'm from Bengal. I'm from Kolkata, I'm a Bengali. And, but I have spent many years of my life in Gurukul, in, uh, under my Guruji, Guru's training in Srijan, Guru Ratikant and Guru Sujata Mahapatra. And I have performed in their repertory and the immersion in the culture has been invaluable to my journey as an artist, to my journey as a scholar. So Audra Magadhi, I say this with such great pride that even um, in, in the Shastrik, 
annotation by Bharata, we had uh, the mention of Orissa, but also there is archaeological evidence. We do see in the first century BC, Jain monarch Karavela, uh, uh, we see Odysseus imprint in uh, the famous Udaygiri caves. So uh, we are really talking about uh, 2000 years ago here. But the, the uh, deep scholarly understanding of Odyssey over 2000 years is really spotty and I uh, really encourage scholars and artists to take initiative and do deep research, deep dive in the history. Um, we do know Orissa is replete with beautiful, gorgeous temples with a uh, beautiful stone sculpture, certain poses like Darpana, uh, where the, the woman is looking at the mirror or Supasarika where the woman is with the parrot. Uh, these are iconic and it comes up in many, many dances all the time. It's indeed a syncretism of sorts, Odyssey. I just mentioned Jain monarch, Caravella, and then there has been Buddhist influence and the various strands of uh, the worldview that we call Hinduism, the various strands of Vaishnavism, Tantrism, Shaktism, Shaivism, various strands have sort of coagulated in this beautiful journey that we call Odyssey. I go, my, I go to my sixth point here and I want to mention Mahari. Mahari is this temple dancer who used to be appointed in Jagannath temple and other temples to perform before the deities. And the current Odyssey, um, the current Odyssey solo format sort of follows that Mahari template where the Mahari is this devotee. Similarly, even though Odyssey is a concert art form, which was primarily constructed for the concert, not for the temple. However, it personifies the dancer, the solo artist, or even the group ensemble deeply is entrenched within devotion. And devotion and spirituality can mean many things to many people. Acknowledging that because artists of both Indian and non-Indian origin are extremely successful in this form as we know it today. So um, again, regional, colonial and national aspects have really influenced the form the anti-notch movement by the British government where it did not understand the idea of dance or in the temple. It did not understand because of its Victorian Puritanism and because of the, the sort of uh, incongruence of dance and devotion in their psyche, they could not understand and they very simply dismissed dance and uh, the colonial regimes have been uh, doing this throughout the world. They stopped people from um, very many colonies, stopped them from dancing. In any case, we had this anti-notch movement, which was also very complex because there was also exploitation in the temple dance community. So it was very complex and I cannot even imagine to go into parsing that out. However, to note that Odyssey really got wrapped up, the Indian classical dance got wrapped up in this and the hereditary communities, the hereditary lineages that continued the art, art form over the years that got transplanted to upper, upper class women like me. Uh, again, I, I'm probably the 10th generation to benefit from this. However, uh, really it got, it got more democratically accessible. Uh, one other thing uh, that needs mention here is the Gotipua dancing community. Gotipua means single boy. And it, it, it is one other really important dance community that influenced the current form of Odyssey as we know. So both Mahari and Gotipua communities are continuing in some capacity 
although the lineage maharis are not there anymore there are artists who sort of uh, really want to don a don the mahari costume and the mahari persona and they do a version of mahari dance gotipua dancers continue in their sort of traditional formats even today right from the 16th century and in in these gotipua dances they do a lot of acrobatic and a lot of like martial forms so i believe the mayur bhanj chow that's also a part of the orishan fabric cultural fabric is also sort of ingrained in these akharas in these gotipua akharas so i move on i have three questions um uh, okay vijay ji um do you want to ask your questions um and uh, i can continue my presentation in a second thank you rohini should i ask them at the end or now um maybe you can ask a question now uh, if it's okay yeah, okay all right so uh, firstly i just want to ask you whether there is an overlap in the different classical dance styles like kathak odissi and uh, bharatnatyam and secondly i wanted to ask you uh, the musical accompaniment which enhances the dance so much did the musical accompaniment go hand in hand with the development of dance or that was something that was added later thank you for those two beautiful questions vijay ji and they are really vast uh, they are indeed vast uh, the first one in terms of the similarities and differences of indian classical forms i think there is that basic assumption of the un, um, of um, the acceptance of natya shastra as the or text so this natya shastra as this pan indian if you may say universal as far as india goes in terms of influencing all the various regions and then bharatnatyam kathak odissi they have their regional influences they have their regional textual representations they have their regional aesthetics developed as well as social political and economic factors so although i can show you a simple difference and rama please tell me if i am incorrect okay so a simple difference um in odissi i will not straighten my hand i will always bend my elbow oh. i will never straighten my hand unless until i'm like dying or something where you know my heart is leaving my even then perhaps i'll think twice before straightening my hand so i will do the this step as heel flat flat if i am doing heel flat flat and i am in a very i'll i'll go with this in a little bit as maybe now i can say this is the s curve in the odyssey the oh. s curve where you have three distinct bends in the body mm -hmm. so you have really a beautiful curvy linear aspect of the body right away bharatnatyam would be much more geometrically linear mm -hmm. and it might do something like this this say so i'm i'm sure i'm odissizing the bharatnatyam itself but there is a linearity and geometric sort of angularity that the odyssey makes a little more subtle remember the subtly gorgeous tension and then the last point in katha katha would be even more straight and it would probably be something like that right like something like that or something so really linear mm -hmm. and bending but linearity and then s curve and really soft edges right so again this is a very sim simplified way of explaining um but then the musical accompaniment that's also so important um and i say this with a you know something that i also have to sort of really make make myself legible in the dance departments in academia in the united states because in the dance department they really want to separate the music and dance but music and dance cannot be separated 
for Kathak, for Bharatnatyam, for Odissi. They really go hand in hand. And uh, the music, uh, Odissi music, it's unique because it's neither Hindustani nor Carnatic. It's neither the Northern nor the Southern. It has its own music. So the richness of the Odissi music is definitely sort of, uh, you know, uh, complementary. I will not say uh, it comes after or before, but literally complements the, the dance itself. I have third burning question since you mentioned Kathak. Sure. Is there a lot of uh, influence from Indian Muslim culture on Kathak? Uh, yes. I, yes. Not just Kathak, the entire the entire nation, because we do have influence of any political regime on the cultural fabric. Negative, positive, we can doubt and debate. The influence is indebatable, undebatable. The influence is there. For example, during Akbar's regime, Gotipua communities flourished in Orissa. So dance flourished in Orissa. And Gotipua communities, they also were able to flourish unscrutinized by the Brit under the British noses as well, because they were not threatening. They were young boys dressed as girls and dancing for public entertainment and as well as for ritual. But it was not the female body, the adult female body doing it, which gets, which brings in all sorts of conservatism and complications and exploitation and all of that. So uh, yes, I think the short answer is yes. Thank you so much for those questions. And again, um, I'm happy to continue this conversation on email. I want to acknowledge Karen Greenspan's uh, and, and Rohinidhi's uh, uh, chats. Thank you, Rohinidhi. Um, Karen, you mentioned the, the notion of land acknowledgement and the gesture of taking the energy from the earth into the dancer's body perfectly expresses a quote by the modern dancer, Anna Halprin. We are not related to nature. We are nature. Um, thank you. That's a beautiful segue into the remaining of my presentation. So I move on. Um, so just briefly mentioning and acknowledging that I am, uh, I belong to Guru Kelechar and Mahapatra style of Odyssey. That's the only form I'm trained within, but I have visually seen Guru Pankacharan Das, Guru Deva Prasad Das. I'm not, I, I being an Odyssey dancer and having been a devotee, I'm still unaware of uh, Guru Madhar Raut and Guru Surendra Jena. I know of their forms only as a scholar. So just to put it out there that there are so many styles of the form and uh, I am only the tip of the iceberg uh, in just one style. It is indeed some, it is indeed a form even within the 90 years or so since uh, we've had the appellation in the middle of the 20th century, we are uh, sort of the innovation in the form has been very, very strong. So this is Guru Sujata Mahapatra, and uh, I am indebted to her <laughs> forever. Um, I do want to note this, um, the aesthetic aspect, something that we touched upon with Vijayji's question on the difference across styles, across forms of dance. But um, the aesthetic is deeply ingrained in text. So Indian classical dance, Unlike many other dances of the world, I will, um, I will be so bold to say it's an extremely scholarly form and it's deeply embedded within text. And text, uh, text is um, not just the body, uh, but the body as a, a tool of transformation, the way we started our conversation today, the body as a tool to really grow, ingrain yourself within sadhana and sadhana can look the way and take the shape or form that you want to give it 
So this is my guru, Sujata Mahapatra, and here she is embedded in Satvik, Satvik Abhinaya, this idea of really taking all the visual geometry, all the mental sort of calculations of stage symmetry, of uh, group choreography, but all of that, but then really connecting to your inner core to connect with the divine. So indeed it's important to acknowledge um, the aspect of the geometry and the degrees of dynamism in the body, but also to connect the geometry to the goal of, um, if I may borrow Karen's comment, we are nature, we are it, we are the divine. Um, and in terms of the texts that are mentioned here, uh, Gita Govinda is an iconic text. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful uh, masterpiece by Jayadeva, poet Jayadeva, and who sort of uh, fills the space with such rich imagery. And um, Guru Kelacharan Mahapatra has taken those Ashtapadis, the eight verse poems, from eight verse songs from Gita Govinda and created these beautiful uh, canonical works that are etched in our memories and bodies forever. So I do want us to um, take, uh, just see a, a brief excerpt from Guruji's Pashit, uh, Guruji's Dhira Samire, Yamuna Tire. Here, um, the Sakhi is asking, Radha, do not delay and go and meet Krishna. So this is Guruji in Ashtapadi. <laughs> Thank 
of time, I would move on. So what I presented was this idea of tradition, right? Um, Guruji's iconic choreography embedded within the philosophy of sadhana and, and the evolution and the syncreticism and the athleticism and the choreography and all that I mentioned, right? The aspects of Gotipua introduced the syncretic aspects of religiosity, um, the choreography that Guruji, we just saw a Gita Govinda, the beautiful choreography, but we also have uh, dramatic, more on ensemble choreographies, right? So we saw an example of a solo choreography. There are also more group choreographic works nowadays. I'm reminded of Srijan Ensemble. I used to be a part of it at one point in my life. Um, and then I'm reminded of Guru Madhavi Mudgal's choreography. Uh, so, and there are many, uh, there, there are Odyssey, there's the Odyssey Dance Company um, by Dr. Aparupa Chatterjee in the United States. There is Guru Shraddha. These are also ensemble choreographies uh, that really take the form and devise it in, in, in beautiful ways. So I now wanna talk a little bit about the aspect of transition and here I, I want to mention, um, I want to mention uh, uh, Dr. Rohini Dandavati's commissioning of our movement of this beautiful work, Bichitra Anundo Enigmatic Bliss, um, which I performed, I premiered in uh, the Erasing Borders Festival this this July, uh, sorry, this September. So, um, you know, how Rohini Di even mentions on the chat, Guruji's subtlety in expression and calm demeanor is unique. And I find in this particular choreography, the calmness and the subtlety remains, although we, although Rohini Di envisions the choreography in ways that are that have more contemporary relevance so this particular piece i will perform and you will have to tell me um, if i stand true to what i'm saying um, this is a piece that is uh, inspired by and based upon a particular song by kobe guru rabindranath tagore nobel laureate nabirunath thakur um, I grew up hearing, listening, imbibing um, Tagore. So this was again me returning to Tagore through Odyssey. So again, talking about cultural, regional influences and cultural syncreticism, India sort of, you know, is just amazing at it. The music, again, something that Vijayji pointed out, the choreography of this piece and the music composition of this piece by Anirban Bhattacharya in terms of the melodic modes and the percussion by Ram Prasad Ganavarapu, um, you know, it was just, it, it was happening sort of in a cyclically, each informing the other manner. So we would come up with movement, share that with the musicians, Musicians would come up with percussive sections or melodic sections shared with us. We would try it 
on Zoom. Again, we are in the world of the pandemic and, and then we would return. So it was really an interesting process and also a learning process for me, um, not, just, uh, not just really imbibing the brilliance of my choreographer, Dr. Landavate, but also really understanding the, the, the syncretic approaches, the really uh, reinforcing of dance and music in, um, in Odyssey compositions. So a little bit about the, the text and the theme of the dance. So this dance, the words um, of this, the, the song are Joyo Tabo Bichitra Anundo, He Kobi Joyo Tomaro Koruna. So simply uh, acknowledging the beauty that the, the, the final creator, the creator of this magnanimity that we call life, um, and how how strange that creation is. On one end we see struggle, on one end we see death, and the other end we see the beauty and um, the, the the abundance of life. So this became particularly uh, true in the pandemic, where we did see the the nature uh, smile. We did see pollution levels in Delhi go down. Um, and then again, they have come back on because of uh, human intervention. So uh, it's, it's the aspect of the strangeness of this world that we live in with, where there is both life and death. So we took three sort of couples of the binary. One is Karuna Ananda, which uh, sadness and joy, one is Timira Jyoti, darkness and light, and one is Milana Bicheda, coming together and separation, union and separation. For Milana Bicheda, we, we talked about the human coming together, but also uh, we talked about uh, refugeeism, or rather we portrayed in choreography refugeeism and, and this sort of um, building walls of separation amongst each other, separating children from their parents. In, in uh, Light and Dark, Timira Jyoti, we showed how birds, they, they sort of um, fly out in the horizon during the morning and return back and re return to their respective tree branches and sleep at night. And in Karuna Ananda, we really explored the pandemic and the death that we see all around us um, and, the, and the loss, the, the irreparable loss that we see. So I now stop the PowerPoint and uh, take a dance break. So if you have any thoughts, please, please put it in the chat. And if you have any questions, we'll take it right after this presentation. The name of this piece is Bichitro Anundo, Enigmatic Bliss. It is by choreographer, Dr. Rohini Dandavati. I apologize for the wrong track. Ah, ah, ah,
Thank you. Thank you, Kausabi. I think we are breaking up a little bit towards the end. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. 
um, the, uh, the screen is frozen though. Towards the end, a couple minute or so, uh, it was freezing and intermittent sound, but we can hear you nicely now. But I would say a wonderful, wonderful for performance and the contrast between um, the, the positive and the negative was wonderfully seen and the, the nature that you showed was absolutely beautifully portrayed. The, the, the deer and the birds and the peacock and wonderfully, wonderfully done. Thank you so much. I think Kausavi is freezing up a little bit. We'll give her a couple of minutes to come back. Kausavi, are you there? Deepa, you might want to ask her to disconnect and reconnect. Kausavi, uh, are you there? Ask can you hear? Can you can you hear me now? Yeah, now I can see you, but I have I, I will remove the spotlight from um, from you and I'll I'll have you on Monali's I'll pin you on Monali's screen. Thank ah, you. Yes. Good. Good. <laughs> The technological challenges that we face. The technological, <laughs> the technological challenges that we truly face. Yeah. Um, can you see me now? <laughs> we can see you and hear you properly. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Perfect now. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So this is my friend, uh, my friend, student, Monali Nandi Mazumdar. Um, she, <laughs> so thankfully she came to rescue and I'm able to continue my presentation perhaps. So, um, thank you for all the beautiful comments. Um, is there, is there a question I hear? I did see Vijayji. I think you had another question. <laughs> yes, I do. Can I ask them now? Please, please. Okay. Uh, do I understand correctly that you have written a book? on relationship between uh, dancing, art of dancing and social justice? Um, I, I am in the process. It's not published yet. So uh -huh. it's still under review by McFarland Publishers. It's a, yes, that's, that's true. And um, I will elaborate a little more on your question with my last slide, if that's okay. Oh. Um, because I, uh, I wrote in this book, I wrote about a choreographer. Uh, she is based in Minneapolis and her work brings together dance and social justice. So that's why, that's how I um, called my book, Dance, dance as a Technology of Social Justice. Can I ask my second question? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what do you think whether uh, should should a course on art and arts and humanities be mandatory in Indian high schools to make the students more aware of social justice? I I truly I truly feel that the education system, sir, is um, has become very um, the education and uh, the acquiring of knowledge is. Uh, almost secondary to the acquiring of the economic benefits with that knowledge. Um, and that's true for my life also, because um, I, I did my graduation um, as a backup. Um, I, I did my graduation in economics as a backup, but uh, eventually I realized that that's hard. And that's, I, I don't say that as our fault as our, as our kids fault. It's, it's the, it's the society we live in all over the world, but it's true that you mention arts and humanities. They really can go hand in hand. 
and indian arts in its own right indian arts is just so 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 vast south asian arts is so vast and uh, the beauty of it is it involves philosophy of life um, it does involve uh, it is embedded in uh, a particular philosophy of life whatever philosophy you follow vedanta or yoga or mimamsha or sankhya or whatever philosophy there are so many philosophical schools of india right so i think arts and humanities even a, a little bit of a teaser is is at least something that the students should definitely have so i totally agree with you right, thank, thank you. you for bringing that up thank you um, I do see one question um, from Pr Pranaya ji. Uh, are you asking me why do I dance, Pranaya ji? <laughs> um, actually, my name is Panya. <laughs> Panya. 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 <laughs> Sorry, Panya. Yeah. What is your question? Uh, my question was, why do you dance? Do you, are you attracted to it, or or is it for the fun of it? Because I remember my guru, Rama Ma'am, she asked me that question, and I would like to ask that too. Thank you. Please, uh, please um, uh, share my best wishes to Rama Ma'am. I, I love your guru. Your guru is really incredible. Um, um, why do I dance, Panaya? I I don't know what else to do. I I don't know how else to be. Um, I really dance for breath i really dance for life and there are those moments when i'm losing myself and get, grabbing myself back because if i'm losing myself i'm forgetting the choreography that my teacher or rohinidhi has taught me right so there is that losing yourself in dance but then maintaining the self consciousness or the the mental acumen um, so it's a constant balance. And I wish, I mean, I'm still not there, Panaya, but I wish that I can really lose myself in dance without making a single mistake. <laughs> um, I'm not there yet, you know, I'm not there yet. <laughs> um, that is really beautiful, I must say. <laughs> Thank you for answering the question. Thank you. Um, I will try to go back to my um, screen and see if if we are able to now. Can you hear me? Uh, uh, just unmute. Uh, just mute the other device. Okay. You can. Hold on. Hold on. Where is your? Mute. Okay. Okay. Sorry for all the tech issues. Um, okay, so if you can spotlight me, then. Yep. Okay, great. So I, I do want to share one last slide, please. Um, and in this, I want to just talk a little bit about the question that Vijayji raised in terms of the connection of arts and humanities, arts and social justice. And uh, this, is, this is my last uh, sort of slide, and I know in the interest of time, I need to end. So in conclusion, I will say that the transformative possibility that uh, Pana, Panya was even asking me in dance, uh, the transformative possibility, whether it is a spiritual transformation of the dancer doing sadhana, or the transformation of a society. So um, this is Ananya Dance Theater. It is a diaspora-based company. It's based in Minneapolis. And um, Anunna D and myself, the choreographer Anunna Chatterjee, Dr. Anunna Chatterjee, she is an established dance scholar in uh, US academia. And what she does is she, she creates people-powered dances of transformation. And she draws on the beauty of Odyssey, yoga, and Chow. She brings all three forms together and then uses the philosophy of Shangram. Shangram means struggle and resistance in Bengali. So she uses the philosophy of Shangram to create contemporary dance. She's not calling it Odyssey anymore. She creates contemporary evocative choreography to create heat and inspire audiences. And 
and and sort of have the purpose of dark which is transformation call to action so this idea that movement can inspire us can transform us and then bring us together in a collective capacity in that case dance is a radical practice and not just entertainment so there are so many ways um, for me dance is to lose myself however for dr chatterjee dance is to mobilize communities and fight against injustices so with that i end my presentation today a uh, to see tradition transition and transformation thank you so much rama thank you thank you kasavi uh, uh, it was wonderful presentation it was uh, odissi is my second favorite i i have to be partial to kathak but one of my second favorites is odissi the grace and the sensual aspects of the dance have always always been very precious to watch and to observe and of course to learn so thank you for a wonderful presentation um i am going to start with i have a list of questions so if i get to it then but i have just one question the mahari community that you mentioned is it something similar to the devdasi tradition in maharashtra or west western part of india that is true devdasi is sort of the pan indian sanskrit word and even the the etymology of the word devdasi is um is a colonial um legacy unfortunately right um the word the in maharashtra i'm sure there is a similar term that we use in orissa which is mahari right like so this pan indian understanding of this term uh, but yes it is the temple dancing communities who are uh, beautifully uh, you know dedicated to the form however um have complex lives they have complex lives where uh, they have to deal with patronage they have to deal with economic issues and they have complex lives yes um also i would like to acknowledge some of uh, the some of the performers educators and gurus that have uh, blessed us with their presence today um there's dr rohini dandavate there's dr purnima shah i can see doc, um, i can see uh, ramya kapadia so thank you all for joining in uh, with us today if you have any questions please go ahead and i think we had a couple of questions um, there was a, a question from chitra hardikar chitra if you can unmute and ask Uh, hello namaskar kostu ji so beautiful so beautiful so graceful thank you so much um i had a quick question what are the different percussion instruments used in odissi dance and what are the different tals that the dance is performed in absolutely again odissi music uses mardala mardala is a two headed drum and uh, the sound is different from the mridangam um but it is sort of that um that lineage um and then the talas are also very particular to uh, odissi music there is uh, this particular dance that you saw is in tripata tal seven beats dhai tati nam tati nam tati nam dhai tati nam tati nam tati nam dhai right um and then there is one very particular uh, sort of um Mm, repertoire if you may call in odissi it's called swabda swara patta simply it means where the words are uh, the words are chanted rather than sung and the words are rhythmic rhythmically aligned rhythmically constructed so yeah um but again odissi music is indeed a vast field of its own yeah beautiful thank you thank you thanks so much I think the next question was by Sudha Rajdeerkar. Sudha, if you want to unmute and ask. Um, thank, thank you, Kasuji. This was this was so gorgeous. It was you made our day really beautiful. Um, I have a question. Um, is the Odissi dance form usually performed to a uh, Madhya Malaya? Uh, you know, you uh, I you showed your you you danced uh, to. different uh, compositions and you also had a clip from uh, guru uh, kelu charan ji so uh, that's that's what i thought but um, I, i'm not uh, I, i mean this is a one on one so you can uh, elaborate on that 
And then are there any specific ragas that you commonly use in your performances? Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. You are right on, Sudhaji. Um, Odyssey brings its curvilinearity into the fore. And in order for us to complete a circle and the audience to register the completion, there needs to be a little of um, a little more of respite. Right. So I, I do say I do have to agree with you that, um, you know, it can be Dhrut, it can be Ati Dhrut and it can be Madhyam and uh, Vilambit. It can be all of those, the entire range, like every classical form, the range exists. Although the majority of we see in order for the lyricality, the lilting nature of the form to flow, there needs to be an emphasis on um, on, on really smoothening out edges and that smoothening often happens at the expense of speed and for the right reasons right um, because yes in in our society also speed is you know everything is faster and even me in my 20s i believe i was doing atidru that was <laughs> that i thought that was the way to go but you know i i hopefully know better now <laughs> um, and then in terms of your other question um, of the ragas the melodic modes are particular to odyssey and they are a blend sometimes so for example uh, the basant pallavi raga that we do in odyssey i've heard my hindustani friends hindustani artists vocalists say that this is not Basant in Hindustani. And then my Carnatic friends have also said, this is not Basant in Carnatic. So, you know, uh, we do share some names, but then the regional influences are true. The regional influences have uh, made those differences. Yes. Um, yeah, this particular raga that you see is Brindav, is Mishra Sarang. It's in the, it's in the combination of Brindavani Sarang. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very grounding. Um, it, it was almost like watching a meme, you know, in action. Thank you. <laughs> mean, I love it. Okay. I'll, I'll quote you on that, Sudhaji. <laughs> um, so I have, we have a next question from Krupa Shah. Krupa, if you want to unmute and ask. Uh, hello. It's really wonderful presentation. It's really nice. Uh, hearing the, all the questions and presentation from you. Uh, actually, this is from my mother-in-law. She actually came to my house to listening and seeing this. And she uh, wanted to ask, uh, um, basically, her uh, is understanding this dance form started out as a form of worship uh, in a Jaganapuri. And uh, what, what would you say its current purpose is? And has it transformed into a mainly entertaining activity? Or would you say it's now about preserving an art form? Or does it retain its worship origins? It would be interested to know. <laughs> Absolutely. It's such a, a vast and beautifully uh, termed question. You know, the Sattvic Abhinaya in Odyssey is at the center, like other classical forms, I would say. So that simply means that the, the complete integrity of the mind, body, soul. So that is already founding the form itself, even just the form. On top of that, the theme and the rhythm and the music come, but the form itself is for that purpose, the purpose of the spiritual alignment of the body. So the purpose of the dance form is indeed alignment, indeed mind, body, soul alignment. Now, the particular form that the dance that I did, it brings out that alignment, not towards a particular God or goddess, but more in an abstract fashion, while acknowledging certain social, certain political, certain environmental factors, right? So there is a combination of reaching out to audiences. Entertainment value used to be there during the Maharis, during the Gotipuas, and it is there in Odyssey. A performing art has entertainment value because even in the Maharis, when they used to perform in Konarak Natya Mandap in the Konarak Sun Temple, there used to be an audience. And after the Maharis dance, 
the audience used to roll on the floor where the maharis danced right so the the there was the audience there was the entertainment value but then there was also this extreme devotional connection with the dance itself such is not possible in a concert scenario that is not the equation odissi bharatnatyam kathak dancers share with their audiences so definitely we think of entertainment value we think of production values we think of costuming we think of lighting we think of precision and form and technique all however um, the the dance itself will not hold if there is no spiritual alignment so that aspect of the dance really holds true and this idea of odissi as a global form is hard it is or or even kathak as a form because then you are diluting its its own thing then don't call it odissi don't call it what you are you know whatever it is that you are using aspects from and doing for entertainment or social justice that's just a different thing altogether yeah so um yes i i guess it's a complex answer entertainment is a part of what i do what odissi is it is a secular form it's a concert form as much as it is a form of transformation a form of spiritual transformation with the alignment of the mind body and soul and in terms of preservation i do feel there is an abundance of um, of artists i feel uh, i i feel there is a pre- there's a need for preservation of uh of particularities of precision there is unfortunately indian classical dance as a field there is if i may say so there is a lot of mediocrity because of this overabundance mm. of so the integrity because we we don't understand the text but we dance right so this it's such a scholarly form and it needs to be preserved in its uh beauty and richness yeah thank you <laughs> thank you so much R- really helpful and uh, you explain it really well thank you can i ask one question please yes my name is jay shri and i felt that the gestures hand gestures in odissi dance have more similarity to kathak rather than any other dance another thing i felt the expressions you showed are so beautiful and it is beautifully done i really really enjoyed it but i felt odissi dance is the gestures are much more softer than any other dance am i right so true so true vijay shri ji absolutely you are you're spot on um the gestures are very soft and and even the gesture ring is soft so i i i am reminded of my sister my older sister she does bharatnatyam and she would always tell me that you you are you don't dance seriously because i don't do this this mm. is bharatnatyam and i do this this is odissi the same ala padma but she used to tell me that you don't dance seriously <laughs> <laughs> yes so true and 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 um even just this example there are gradations and so this is full bloom lotus ala padma then you have pallava which is a little softer than ala padma then you have sithila pataka even softer and then you have the pataka where everything is joined so we don't uh muscularly tension our fingers we don't do that we really let it let the energy flow mm-hmm. thank you thank you so much thank you you are muted rama um i i was just saying that it is fascinating to see that the theory behind all the dance forms is the same uh we have the same hand gestures that are there for kathak um as odissi odissi as uh, bharatnatyam or any other classical dance form but the application 
of the hastaks or the tension in the body is different there is tension in the body for bharatnatyam also for odissi also for kathak but the way in which the tension is applied is completely different in all the three dance forms it is the same for everything else whether it is uh, drushti bhed or drukuti bhed or shiro bhed or charis or sthanakas or um, naika bhed or nayak bhed even though the theory is the same the application is so beautifully different in each of the dance styles and the regional impacts on each of the dance styles so that is i think uh, the most fascinating thing of studying various aspects of classical dance so having said that any other questions from anybody else so let's head towards the end of the program um before we end i think anand has an uh, something uh, about the next coming up uh, virtual forum program uh, that he has to talk about so anand uh aiku yet hai ka tumhara maza camera kai karanamule chalat nahi hai to tumhala aiku yet asla tar pudcha karyakrama vishay fakt ek suchana sangaychi ahe ki 5 december la अजून दोन आठवड्यांनी जो कार्यक्रम होणार आहे तो प्रसिद्ध मराठी कवयित्री इंदिरा संत यांच्या स्वतःच्या कविता आणि त्याही पेक्षा त्यांचं स्वतःच जे गद्य लेखन आहे आत्मचरित्रपद त्यातनं जाणवणार त्यांचं व्यक्तिमत्व आणि त्यांच्या कलेच्या अंगाने जाणारं त्यांचं व्यक्तिमत्व हे कस वाढत गेलं याविषयी त्यांनी अतिशय सुंदर लिहिलेलं आहे तर त्यातून आपण इंदिरा संत प्रतिभा आणि प्रतिमा त्यांच्या स्वतःच्या लेखनातनं उमटणारी त्यांची प्रतिमा त्याचबरोबर त्यांच्याविषयी त्यांची सून म्हणजे सुप्रसिद्ध कथालेखक प्रणा संत प्रकाश नारायण संत हे इंदिरा संत यांचे यांचा पुत्र त्यांचं निधन एका अपघातामुळे दोन हजार चौदा साली झालं परंतु त्यांच्या पत्नी यांनी जे आत्मचरित्र लिहिलं आहे त्यामध्येही त्यांच्या सासूबाई म्हणजे इंदिरा संत यांच्याविषयी काही अतिशय मनोज्ञ माहिती आहे आणि यातून आपण या एका कवितरीचा शोध त्यांच्या प्रतिमेचा शोध त्यांच्या प्रतिभेचा शोध असा थोडासा घेणार आहोत तर हा कार्यक्रम आपण पाच डिसेंबरला करू थँक thank you anand um so thank you everyone for joining us for this lovely odc presentation on the virtual forum today um thank you kausavi again for such a wonderful presentation um thank you for agreeing to come on the forum and bless us with odc uh, we will conclude this session of um taurya pratishthan with a prarthana with a prayer सर्वे भवन्तु सर्वे सन्तु सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु सर्वे सन्तुराम सर्वे शांति 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 थैंक यू एवरीवन वी विल सी यू अगेन इन कपल वीक्स for the wonderful program on indira sant thank you thank you so much bye, bye.